Welcome to our video capsule series discussing in Fortumab vedotin treatment-related adverse events in the management of urothelial carcinoma. We introduced the topic in our first chapter with Dr. Normand Blais, who is a medical oncologist and director of clinical research in thoracic oncology at the CHUM and adjunct professor at McGill University in Montreal, Quebec. Dr. Joël Claveau, a dermatologist specializing in the diagnosis and treatment of melanoma and skin cancers, and an associate professor with the Department of Medicine at Laval University, guides us through this discussion. In the first chapter, we discuss the evolution of therapy from chemotherapy to treatment with novel therapies such as n 4 vedotin or EV. We then focus on the key clinical trials examining the efficacy and safety of EV for the treatment of urothelial carcinoma. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Joël Claveau, dermato-oncologist at uh, CHU de Québec. I have the pleasure to work today with uh, Dr. Normand Blais, uh, professor of medicine and medical oncologist at Le CHUM, and we're going to speak about the new uh, development in the uroendothelial uh, carcinoma. So, uh, Dr. Blais. Good evening. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, the objectives for tonight are actually to talk about uh, a new and exciting compound that's being used for locally advanced and metastatic urothelial carcinoma. Uh, so we're going to focus on um, infortumab vedotin, uh, which is uh, now regularly used to treat uh, this disease. So we're going to talk about uh, its uh, indication. We're going to talk about different uh, uh, management issues, including the adverse events, and we're going to focus with the uh, presence of Dr. Claveau uh, to guide us about uh, different skin reactions we can see with this product and how we can uh, learn to manage them. The common situation in metastatic curothelial carcinoma is that this disease is, is really um, difficult to treat for most people. Um, we find that a lot of patients have comorbidities, have vascular disease, have many tobacco-related uh, disease, uh, which obviously is, is the cause of urothelial carcinoma for most patients. And these comorbidities uh, associated with age uh, make it difficult to treat most patients. Uh, these patients all have some form of renal failure as well, so that contributes uh, to us not being able to treat most patients uh, that uh, would need some form of treatment to uh, potentially prolong uh, their disease and potentially even have long-term remissions from treatment. So for the patients that can be treated, uh, the standard of care in Quebec and Canada is uh, usually using platinum-based doublets. So that's still the um, standard of care for uh, most patients. Uh, and patients that uh, progress uh, on platinum-containing agents usually go on to uh, use, to, to use uh, immunotherapy and eventually down the line can get other treatments that we'll discuss. Uh, Dr. Blick, can you explain us a little bit the alg actual algorithms for treatment of erotelial carcinomas? The uh, usual standard of practice in Canada is to use uh, platinum doublet chemotherapy. Um, the, there was indication for uh, immunotherapy in patients that are not eligible for uh, chemotherapy, but that is not uh, reimbursed uh, in Canada. So essentially, patients are selected to receive a carboplatin or cisplatin combined with gemcitabine. Uh, Dostanzenvac is not regularly used in the uh, advanced setting. And then patients that are uh, either stable or responding uh, to chemotherapy move on to avelumab maintenance, whereas patients that are progressing uh, after chemotherapy, uh, instead of using avelumab, they'll be using pembrolizumab, uh, essentially because pembrolizumab has been studied in the progressive space and Avelumab has been studying in the patients that are stable or responding. Uh, Infortumab vedotin, the drug that we're going to talk about a lot tonight, 
uh, is mostly used in patients that are progressing after chemo and after uh, immunotherapy. So essentially uh, a third agent uh, that's being considered for that disease. What is the mechanism of action of Enfortumab uh, Vedotin? It's a targeted therapy, I believe. So it's a combination of targeted and chemotherapy. Uh, and we'll see later on that the side effects of Enfortumab are uh, linked to the cytotoxic activity of this uh, antibody drug conjugate. So these types of drugs are uh, abbreviated ADCs to mean antibody drug conjugate. And uh, from, uh, from the composition of this molecule, it's an antibody combined linked to chemotherapy drugs that are essentially being uh, internalized into cells. And uh, when this compound is uh, degraded by the lysosome, uh, the chemotherapy part of this drug, uh, which is monomethyl oristatin E, a uh, very hard name to pronounce, even when we're used to it. Uh, and so this compound is a cytotoxic portion that is going to be uh, involved in the cytoxic cytotoxicity of the cell, but it can actually also diffuse outside of the cell and have a bystander effect. So this will probably explain a lot of the um, non-tumoral side effects uh, that this drug can have. What are the main studies uh, demonstrating the efficacy of Enfortunab van Dutin? This Enfortunab has become a standard of care. So uh, that was based mainly on this trial. Uh, EV301 uh, was a randomized trial that compared Enfortunab van Dutin with uh, third-line chemotherapy. So it used to be that uh, taxanes like docetaxel or paclitaxel would be used in patients uh, with no other option. So this was the um, uh, proof of concept trial and the registration trial for Enfortumab that uh, essentially uh, was able to show that uh, we could improve survival uh, with Enfortumab Vedotin compared to what was considered to be poorly active uh, chemotherapy. So um, EV301 showed that we could increase uh, the survival probability by 30%. Um, and uh, we also showed that we can increase uh, progression-free survival. We could improve uh, overall uh, response rate. Uh, we could actually double this response uh, with about 19% with chemotherapy, which we've seen in other uh, similar trials using uh, taxane uh, type of chemotherapy, uh, increase that, doubling it to around 41%. Uh, with Enfortumab Vidotin. So very powerful drug, uh, Enfortumab Vidotin, uh, which leads to, as I've mentioned, increase, um, increase, uh, increased in, in uh, very important um, outcomes for patients in this uh, category of, uh, of treatment. Can you tell us about the safety profile of this uh, new treatment? So uh, it's probably going to be important for everyone um, to consider that even though we tend to see this agent as an antibody, because in Fortumab, uh, you know, makes us think that uh, it's an antibody type drug, and we're used to giving antibodies uh, where we don't need to adjust dose, we just give the antibody at a certain uh, fixed uh, interval of time. And uh, we don't tend to see dose-related toxicities, but we, we, we will have to learn, and I hope uh, the audience tonight uh, remembers that there's a chemotherapy aspect of this agent that we can modulate by decreasing the dose, adjusting the intervals, just like we do with chemotherapy. And if you look at the side effect profile, you'll see that it's very much like chemotherapy uh, in terms of the possibility of alopecia, neuropathy, so the linked cytotoxic compound has some neuro, uh, neurotoxic uh, potential, so that has to be uh, remembered. Uh, a lot of side effects uh, in the skin that uh, you'll, you'll probably talk to us about later, Dr. Avo, 
and uh, some digestive aspects, uh, and uh, and uh, as well as as uh, hematologic side effects. Um, when we compare these side effects to chemotherapy, uh, it tends to be relatively similar to what we can expect uh, with ta taxanes uh, that give uh, hematologic side effects, that give uh, neuropathy, uh, and on, on the opposite of taxanes, we'll see a little bit more uh, skin and corneal toxicity. If we want to break it down by um, the frequencies of these adverse events, um, we tend to look at adverse events in terms of all grade toxicity, and we also tend to look at grade three or higher toxicity. But in my personal experience, especially for skin toxicity, corneal toxicity, neuropathy, a grade two is a very significant side effect. And we we wouldn't want to get into a situation where we're pushing uh, treatment in a patient that has a grade two toxicity. I tend to be very proactive when I manage my patient with this agent, and I've learned to uh, dose reduce very fast to avoid getting into um, these significant toxicities. So in terms of magnitude, uh, we see that ocular uh, toxicity, toxicities occur in about one-fifth of patients. Dysgeusia in one-fourth of patients, skin reaction in up to half of patients. So that's going to be a very significant uh, issue to discuss. Hyperglycemia, especially in patients that have underlying diabetes, can run into issues. So it's important to follow blood sugar in patients, uh, especially the diabetics. Uh, some uh, digestive issues, diarrhea, nausea, decreased appetite in up to a third of patients. Uh, some infusion site reactions, which are pretty rare, uh, and uh, as I've mentioned, uh, some uh, occasional um, hematologic toxicity, mostly uh, uh, manifest by uh, decreased neutrophil counts. The side effects, talking about side effects, uh, when we compare enfortumab vedotin with chemotherapy, uh, can uh, occur at different time intervals. Uh, we tend to see the skin reactions much quicker than neuropathy. Uh, we tend to see the ocular disorders a little later uh, than skin reactions. Uh, and we see hyperglycemia uh, relatively quickly. So in terms of sequence, we're going to see the skin reactions first, potentially eventually dry eyes, uh, corneal abrasions, blurred vision. So that can happen in further cycles of treatment. Uh, and so that will lead us to manage our patient differently uh, according to where he's at in terms of his treatment. Now uh, we, we see that there is more and more combination or sequencing of those treatments. Can you tell us about the uh, usage of uh, Afortunab uh, Vedotin in combination with uh, immunotherapy on TPD-1? The combination of enfortumab plus pembrolizumab has uh, been approved by the FDA now. So it's expected that this combination will play a, a bigger role in the frontline treatment of patients. Uh, it, the, approval, the approval by Canada is not, um, is not, um, has not happened uh, as of April 2023. Uh, but we can expect that it might be approved in the future. Uh, but it probably will depend a lot on the results of this trial that is done, uh, but where the results are not uh, available yet. We participated in uh, this trial at CHUM, uh, was comparing infortunal vedotin plus pembrolizumab compared to our standard of care, which is gemcitabine and platinum uh, chemotherapy. And uh, we don't have the results of this trial yet. Uh, but the results of the phase two uh, trials of infortumab and pembrolizumab uh, were um, so encouraging that uh, this is the data that led to F the FDA to approve this combination uh, before the randomized trial results uh, have been shown. And this is EV103. This is the um, important, uh, one of the important data sets that has pushed the FDA to approve this combination. So these patients. Uh, were uh, included to receive 
either EV plus Pembro versus EV monotherapy uh, in successive cohorts. So it's it's essentially a phase two trial. And you can see that the uh, overall response rate for the combination uh, is around uh, 65% uh, compared to uh, EV monotherapy that has uh, a still a very nice response rate of 45%. Um, so, um, so quite impressive results, uh, very encouraging, and we expect the uh, uh, randomized trial that is complete now to be presented in, in the very near future. And um, a lot of people are expecting that EV plus Pembro uh, might move in the first uh, line space and replace uh, our, our standard chemotherapy agents in, in this uh, population of patients. When we look at EV plus Pembro compared to EV monotherapy arm, in the first line space, uh, we see um, uh, from the results of this trial and from my personal experience that uh, we are going to see potentially more EV-related side effects. Uh, we might see more combined side effects that are related to the immune adverse events of pembrolizumab plus the uh, potential cytotoxic effects of enfortumab. Um, we talked about half of patients having uh, adverse reactions with enfortumab vedotin alone uh, in the um, uh, single arm trial of EV plus Pembro. We had up to two thirds of patients uh, with all grade skin toxicities, so uh, potentially more toxic. So we'll have to learn how to uh, manage this combination very uh, precisely. Uh, to uh, decrease the doses of enfortumab, uh, not push the drugs when patients come with side effects, and learn how to uh, work together uh, with our colleagues and potentially uh, mostly dermatologists to uh, be able to help us to give the optimal uh, results that we can get with this uh, very um, efficacious treatment in the future. 